Hello everybody, thank you for joining us today. You are part of the 290 people worldwide who have registered to view this webcast. It's powered by YOL Development and sponsored by USEN, dedicated to acoustic memes and audio solutions. My name is Faisal El Kamasi. I'm a global sales support and coordinator for YOL Development. Before we get started with the webex, with this webcast, I would like to give you some information regarding the logistic. You have the possibility during all the webcasts to submit questions. In order to do so, you simply have to use the box at the bottom of the screen labeled Ask Question. We will answer as many questions today as time permits, and for the remaining question, we'll make a following up via email within a, a week. We'll do our best to do that. Concerning the material and contents, please note that the presentation is available and downloadable in the resource section. You will also receive an email after the webcast within 24 hours with a link to recorded session. So today, your development, Use Sounds and System Plus Consulting will share their analysis for you on acoustic memes and audio solutions. First, let's start with a presentation on the microspeaker industry presented by Johnny Pedersen, Director of Engineering of USound, an Australian-based startup company with key competences within area of audio systems and MEMS micro loud speakers. Johnny is responsible for leading the Mixed Signal ASIC team as well as the hardware, software, and PCB development teams. Johnny, please. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank you to Joel uh, Development for this opportunity, uh, and thank you for the introduction. So, um, USound is a is an Austrian-based startup. Uh, our key competences are uh, MEMS loudspeakers based on the Piezo MEMS technology. So, we are exploring the the, the feature of Piezo MEMS. Uh, technology that it kind of uh, kind of contracts when applying a voltage, just as if you apply pressure, it produces voltage. This is used for microphones, but we use the vice versa that you can uh, apply a voltage and then you can have um, a kind of uh, extraction, as you can see in the animation on on the right. Um, some of the advantages of our technology is that it it's very easy producible. It's uh, quite accurate uh, in production, giving us a high clarity in, in sound production. Actually, we are able to give a very clear and crisp sound uh, with this technology. And also, the manufacturing is, is, uh, is uh, very uh, tight controlled, leaving us with uh, very few variations from device to device. This is one of the, the main advantages of, of this peer to mems technology. Um, another uh, advantage is that you know most of it is built on, um, <coughs> uh, on a wafer production uh, process, meaning that um, also here you have the opportunity to integrate a different kind of components. This could be, you know, besides the MEMS itself, it could be, you know, self-test or um, other circuits that could check for, for a different kind of um, behavior of the MEMS. Uh, you could also, if you want, add more sensors to, to the same kind of device. This is something we also intend to uh, explore. Um, the crisp and, 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 and very uh, tight performance of the MEMS also gives a, a good opportunity to explore ANC, active noise cancellation, applications where um, this very fast uh, reaction of the speaker independent of the frequency is a very uh, important feature. So this is also something that could be explored with, uh, with this technology. Um, in terms of size, uh, we, we uh, also see an advantage of the MEMS uh, loudspeaker technology. Uh, we have here just an example of one of our speakers, one of the smaller ones. Uh, it's uh, pretty small, as you can see, uh, 4.5 millimeters times 6.5 times 1.5. We actually already have 
comparison to speakers twice the size where we are competitive on the key parameters in, in audio like SPL and the THD. So here we also uh, see the, one of the advantage of uh, MEMS loudspeakers. Uh, other physic, uh, physical uh, advantages are, uh, you know, uh, as written here, uh, low weight, uh, low vibration, and, and very much shock resistant. Um, another feature we, we tend to, to pull out is also the, the feature that uh, during a high during high sound pressure level, we don't see a, an increase in temperature like you would see from an electrodynamic speaker. So, so a MEMS loudspeaker is a, a pure capacitive equivalent, uh, meaning it has no loss uh, in, in practice or in theory. Uh, in practice, there is a little bit of loss, but not much. In the, the, the figure uh, in the bottom right, you see some uh, temperature measurements, and you see here for SP3, our speaker it's basically uh, close to room temperature, whereas you have a, a competitive uh, um, or a competitor electrodynamic speaker where we have an increase uh, from 10 to plus uh, from plus 10 to, to 20 degrees increase, whereas we are below one degree for for the main speaker. Um, yeah, so uh, another uh, couple of advantages. Uh, we have compared uh, our own uh, earplug headphone speaker um, uh, with uh, with a competitor competitor from uh, electrodynamic speaker, and uh, we see here uh, on the left side a number of components, quite a few. Um, you, you also see uh, up to three speakers. In this case, two for the lower frequency and one for the higher frequency. Uh, for the U-Sound earplug, we only have one speaker who covers the full frequency range, um, and you also see far less components uh, on the right side. So, um, yeah. So, besides uh, a normal headset, there are other advantages than, and other features you can pull out of the MEMS technology. Um, the, the U-Sound MEMS technology, and this could be, for instance, uh, the ability to to uh, make a, a MEMS microphone. This is uh, something that is highly uh, commoditized, but still this opportunity is, is also with the MEMS technology from U-Sound. Um, like I mentioned, uh, due to the low group delay, active noise cancellation applications are uh, also a, a, a good opportunity with the U-Sound speaker. Um, Due to the way this is produced in, 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 in panels, uh, you can uh, pursue you know, applications where you, you would like to benefit from multiple speakers in panels. They could be you know, to increase, increase uh, sound pressure level, but it could also be to apply some kind of uh, directionality. Um, these panels could be used in TV sets or in the automotive industry for, for the, the audio in, inside an, a, a car. Um, also, we see uh, use, and this will be mentioned later in the presentation, uh, in 3D audio uh, for virtual reality and aug augmented uh, reality. Um, another uh, application of, of, uh, of this technology is uh, ultrasound. So with our speaker, we are also able to extend to uh, 80 kilohertz, and we can use this for uh, audio uh, ultrasound applications. Yeah, so. This speaker is uh, driven uh, different than, than an electrodynamic speaker. Um, this is a pure capacitive, as mentioned, uh, as opposed to an inductive and resistive, resistive load, as we see from electrodynamic speakers. Hence, uh, we, we would uh, need or different kind of driver than you would see from a traditional uh, electrodynamic or balanced armature speaker. Um, we have uh, found a, a, a driver that is a standard component off the shelf that we are using in our uh, development kits and our uh, reference designs. You will see that in, in a few slides. Um, however, in order to fully explore <coughs> and exploit um, the capabilities of the u -Sound MIMS technology, we need a, a specific driver. And for this, we are developing our own uh, chip uh, which also, uh, besides driving the MEMS, can benefit from um, energy recovery. 
there are other, uh, some other features here, but uh, I will skip to the next one. This is uh, just a very fast view of a, of a block diagram of such an uh, amplifier slash driver and the outline of the ASIC. So this, uh, these first uh, slides were, you know, introducing the MEMS technology, introducing, you know, some of the advantages, introducing the, the driver that is needed to, 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 to kind of uh, drive the, the MEMS speaker. Um, I would like now to have a few uh, looks at the market and some of our products. So for sure, uh, one of the first target markets for U-Sound is the headphone and earphone market. Uh, we see here an, uh, an increase uh, according to the, to the prospects of this, uh, this kind of products, applications, uh, and uh, more or less 10% per year over the next 10 years. So uh, U-Sound definitely want to grab a piece of that market with our MEMS speaker technology. Um, this is our roadmap. Um, it's kind of a mix of our speakers. Uh, we have a speaker called Moon, which is kind of a packaged version, version of our speaker, uh, similar to it that you would see from uh, Balanced Armature. Then we have a Ganymede, which uh, is a, a free speaker that needs to be encapsulated in some kind of package, but it offers uh, more flexibility for, for, for the user. And then we have our reference designs at the bottom here. Um, the Mega Clyde and the Tigata. Um, the Mega Clyde is a USB-C based uh, headset uh, that I will share a few uh, words about this in a later slide. Uh, we are also in, in the market of uh, pursuing um, shares in the virtual reality and augmented reality. Um, and here we can also use our Ganymede and we have a reference design slash development kit for this as well, which I will show you later. Once we go into 2019 and 2020, we'll approach the automotive and the mobile mo uh, mobile phone uh, markets as well. So uh, our current earphones, uh, just uh, to show you the difference between the two speakers that we currently have, uh, the Ganymede, which is uh, basically a raw speaker, uh, no back volume, but you can uh, you have to create your back volume yourself. You see that on the left side that uh, the, the mechanic design of the earplug kind of creates the, this back volume, whereas on the right side you have our Moon speaker, which is encapsulated in a package with the possibility to, to bond or wire uh, solder uh, at the bottom. Uh, this one would be easier to integrate, whereas the other one would uh, be more flexible. We have uh, a few uh, reference designs and development kits, so we have our earplug, uh, here, uh, which we use together with our reference design, but also uh, together with the uh, different development kits. We have both a Moon-based and a Ganymede-based headset. You see that on the left. On the right, you see our main uh, demonstrator slash development kit. We call that Ananke. Um, it has the, the features you would need to develop your own headset. Um, they have the amplifiers for driving the MEM speakers. It has Bluetooth. H2DP and HFP profiles can easily be extended with other profiles. It has some DSP that you can play around with some uh, audio filters and so forth, power management, and also m the microphones for uh, a full-blown headset. Then we have a, a very nice and, 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 and uh, if, if you ask me, <laughs> uh, Mega Clyde uh, headphone uh, headset. Uh, which we will present at uh, CES uh, in January. It has uh, a USB-C interface, and, and you will know that USB-C can actually deliver the digital audio from your from your host. Might be a smartphone, might be something else. So you can have the digital sound right up to as close as possible to the to the speaker. And this is what we explore in, in this headset. Uh, we also have here a digital microphones for voice calls, so that support voice calls as well. We have a bass boost, bass boost function, which, um, which uh, you know, uh, it, it, it seems to be the preference of, of many users that you have an extra bass, but we build it in as a, as a separate function that you can turn it off and on, at least to demonstrate the, the feature. And again, there's only one uh, Ganymede speaker in each earplug, uh, not three like you see in other products. 
Yeah, so here uh, I have some comparison. Um, I think it will jump that fast, but you would see that on the, the key parameters of SPL level and THD, uh, we are quite comparable. Uh, and But also here we have a roadmap that shows that we will improve significantly on the SPL level if this is what uh, we want. But already now you would see that we are quite competitive uh, compared to you know, actually high-end products from other companies. Last slide would be um, um, a small talk about our uh, uh, development kit for uh, uh, augmented uh, reality and virtual reality. We have built this. It's uh, basically a glass. It doesn't have the video part, but it's uh, have full support for, for Bluetooth. Uh, again, H2DP and HFP. It has our MEMS tweeters inside. It has direction, uh, sound directionality that leads the sound towards the ear. So it's not a, like an earplug. It's, it's, it's a free audio, if you will. Uh, and we also have here DSP and other stuff uh, like you would see. And in the lower the right, you see a picture of the, the PCBs in here. So this actually concludes uh, the, my presentation, uh, introduction to you sound to the market, market we want to approach and some of our products and um, and, and some of our development kits. And also this last one will be presented at CES in, in January. Thank you. Thank you so much, Johnny, for this uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, so once, once again, do not hesitate to ask questions. So some questions are coming. So using this Q&A button for the Q&A session at the end of the webcast. So let's continue. We will continue with a market overview from Guillaume Girardin, MEMS and Sensors, Market and Technology Analyst at Your Development, about the acoustic MEMS and audio solution. Thank you, Faisal. So hello, everyone. I'm Guillaume from the MEMS and Sensor teams at Your Development. I'm pleased and thrilled to present you our latest analysis of the acoustic MEMS and audio solutions market. So, um, just to start, I will be very quick on the presentation of your development. I hope that many of you are aware of our company, so let's find out very quickly our business. Um, so, your development is a more than more market research company since 1998, operating in the following field. We have strong expertise in those topics, thanks to more than 35 full-time analysts. We are based in France and we have a global activity uh, with US, Europe, and Asia. Um, YAL Development is part of a group uh, from YAL Finance with Blue Morpho, System Plus Consulting, and Nomade, and Tizeo. All the group is dedicated to offer the maximum of services in the field of technology and strategy analysis. Uh, we have three main businesses, from consulting and custom analysis at different levels of intelligence, we also produce all the chef reports, more than 50 reports per year, so market and technology reports, but also patent investigations and teardowns and reverse costing analysis, thanks to our sister company, System Plus. On top of that, we also provide media services with our website, iMicronews, and also event organizations like Tech Days. For any information, do not hesitate. Please free to ask us. So, now let's go back to our main focus about acoustic MEMS and IC audio associated with. Um, so to, to, to be clear, we, we, let's start with the first block of the audio chain. So uh, Johnny from USound uh, presented the, the last block of the supply chain, so the micro speakers. So we will be on the beginning of this audio chain, the microphones. So we analyzed several applications from low-end, high-volume applications, cell phone, tablet, PC, to high-end, low-volume applications uh, for industrial or military usage. And here is what we found uh, about the different technology of microphones. And as many of you already know, the microphones market is divided in two main technology, the oldest one, the ECM, electric condenser microphones, and the MEMS microphone. So here you can see um, a chart where you can see the evolution of those different technology on the, on the market. So according to us, the volume of the microphones market has reached more than 8 billion units in 2017. 
And the milestone for the MEMS microphone has been the year 2014, when MEMS have overtaken the ECM market in, in volumes. So here you can see the annual growth rate of the ECM and the MEMS microphones, and uh, the evolution are quite uh, opposed uh, in the opposed way. Um, if we look at the value of those different markets, um, 2013 was a transition year with a value exceeding $1 billion. The MEMS microphone is now leading the audio capturing market. Since 2003 and the introduction of the MEMS technology by NULS, the market has increased continuously, showing an annual growth rate expected at 4.2% from 2017 to 2022. Uh, in the meantime, we see that the ECM market is, uh, is, was stable until recently and is now declining, um, competing with the, with the MEMS technology. Um, on the next slide, you can see um, the market value of the MEMS microphones and the volume associated with. So this graph shows both the volume and, and value and the dependency of this market uh, regarding the cell phone market, uh, when in 2015 the cell phone market has started to slow, and you can see that the slope has changed. So we see here both effects of the cost pressure and the slowdown of the growth of the cell phone market. So currently we estimate the market at 1.1 uh, billion dollars by uh, 2022. It will be 1.2 billion dollars by 2022. If we look at um, the different players in the field, um, so uh, there's no surprises. Uh, Knowles is still the world leading suppliers of main microphones with 41% of the market share. Gotech is consolidating its second place position with almost 20% of the market share. And AAC has stumbled this year with a 46% decrease in revenue from the microphones market, and their market share has plunged from 16% to 7.5%. We are still investigating to understand why, um, but ASI could be on track on the, on the next years because um, the supplying of the MEMS microphones in the cell phone industry uh, is quite hard and, and versatile. So as you can see, um, on the charts in 2016, the MEMS, the MEMS microphone revenue were above one billion dollars. Um, among the other players, you can find BAC, GetUp, ST, Bosch, TDK. So Bosch recently announced um, the shutdown of their uh, acoustic activity. Um, so we will see in the future how the, the, the market will will evolve. Um, if we look at the MEMS die level, so it's also interesting to take a look at this, um, to see that there's two giants on this uh, market, so Infineon and Sony are the two uh, biggest players on this, uh, on this market. So regarding the revenue, um, Sony is leading um, shortly uh, in front of Infineon, but regarding the volume, Infineon is 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 ahead of of of, uh, of Sony. Um, so in terms of value, uh, we estimated the MEMS microphone die market value at 133 million, and the volumes of MEMS die uh, around 4.5 billion units in 2016. Um, so now let's take a look at more market trends on the microphones market. Um, so the next slide is there to show you um, some assumptions we made before the release of the iPhone 8. Um, so as usual, Knowles, Gore-Tex uh, were expected, but also ST. So it depends on the versions of the cell phone you are, uh, you are looking at, but sometimes you didn't find any Knowles microphones in the, in the cell phones. Uh, sometimes it's only a Gore-Tex, so maybe AC Micro could be a supplier of, of a microphones. We, we, we don't know. Um, it could be, uh, potentially they could be. 
So if we look at the market drivers, we identify three main drivers. So uh, this is high quality voice captures for calls, so clear voice functions. Uh, sound for video shared and social media, so we need high fidelity sound. And the low distortions for um, VPA, so we call VPA the voice personal assistant like Google Home or uh, Amazon Alexa, Echo Dot, uh, these kind of things. Um, just uh, some statistics about Apple to show you um, that Apple's purchase order for microphones were quite high this year. Uh, with the iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, AirPods, and Macs. And Max. So we are almost 1.2 billion units ordered by Apple this year to, uh, to, uh, to equip their, their devices. So the smartphone is a communication device, and as such, audio components are really critical, and that's why people are working hard on, on it. Um, now, Let's take a look at uh, one kind of devices that are uh, emerging on the, on the market. This is what we call earables. So it's not like um, old um, headsets, uh, wireless or, uh, or, with, um, or wired. Um, so this is a new gen of uh, devices like the AirPod of the Samsung Gear X or from, from, from Sony. So um, we think that those devices uh, will experience a strong growth in the, in the futures. Um, so according to us, we think that in 2017, almost 10 million units of this uh, have been sold, and the ramp up uh, will be huge. Um, we estimate that in 2022, uh, maybe more than 50 uh, million units per year will be sold um, on the on the market, so all the big OEMs are, are looking at this market. So uh, Samsung, Sony, Apple, but uh, for sure Huawei or Xiaomi are, are, are on track to to address um, to address this um, this market. Um, so just to, to to have a small reminder about the the, the the cell phones and the smartphones. So as they are becoming thinner, um, it thus requires smaller microphones. Uh, with higher performances and lower power consumption, so it applies also for earables. But the quality of the microphone plays a strategic role for voice commands in, in those earables and those also mobile phones. So high SNR are required, and waterproofing is also a feature that is also required uh, by many people. So those are two challenges that must be overcome in the, in the futures, and, and many players uh, are looking at at it. Um, maybe we can just take a look at another big and hype, we, which is in the hype, um, which are VPA, so Virtual Personal Assistant. So as I, I just mentioned, uh, those from Google like uh, Home, Home Mini or Amazon uh, Eco uh, and um, the, the, the upcoming uh, HomePod from, from Apple. Uh, we think there's a big market uh, from the consumer market for, for people like uh, you, you, you and me, but also you will find those um, devices uh, in, your, in your homes um, with the smart home trends. So here is a short forecast about those devices. And uh, we think we, we, we slightly increased um, our forecast about those devices recently regarding the sales of uh, the different um, devices on the, on the market. So we think in 2017, 11 million units uh, will be sold, uh, representing more than 70 million uh, of microphones, because you find five to seven microphones in those uh, devices, in those systems. So the, the amount and the quantity of microphones that you, you that those market is is uh, leveraging is, is quite huge. So we estimate that in 2022, um, more than 110 million systems will be sold, and uh, the number of microphones embedded will be uh, higher than uh, half a billion units. So maybe there will be um, a reduction of the number of microphones uh, embedded in those systems thanks to higher SNR and better software 
performances uh, with noise cancellations or these features could decrease the number of microphones embedded in those, um, in those solutions. So as I mentioned, the demand for VPA is, is high, uh, which is understandable as the technology is new, easy to use, fun, and, and productive. Um, however, the performances of the AI behind those systems, um, as defined by languages understood and spoken, so now it's mainly English languages, but also some Germans and other uh, languages. So this is still a limiting factors, as this is the potential for, for data mining. So I think it should be it, it could be a, a great market in, in China. So we need to um, OEM need to focus on the on the AI behind those um, those systems. It's not only a question of, of microphones or hardware, but also software. So we see a 59% CAGR um, in, the, in, the, in the coming years. So as you know, uh, Amazon and Google uh, are in competitions, and Apple is entering the race. Um, so the Cupertino-based company will release the Opod at the beginning of 2018, uh, incorporating Siri features. But Apple did not present the HomePod as an assistant uh, due to uh, limited function from, from Siri for performances. Um, but those performances of Siri are not dependent from Apple skills, but it's dependent from the way Siri learns things and how the deep learning behind Siri is, is, is done. So it's, uh, it's a question of software and, and deep learning and data mining. Um, Let's talk now about the other part of the audio chain. Uh, so with the increasing demand for sound quality and complex features like beamforming and 3D rendering, uh, audio processing is more complex than ever. So this has led to an increasing demand for smart chips and strong computing skills. So now the APU that you find in those systems, so the APU designer seems to have the competitive advantages as the powerful APUs can manage the audio chain, they can decide whether to implement audio processing, pay for licensing, or develop their own algorithms. So to answer this threat, this threat audio processing manufacturers, such as Knowles and Cyrus Logic, are tending to implement more intelligence in their chips. But they, they must develop software, algorithm, and data management skills, or outsource. Some, some of these, so which is required significant investment. Um, so audio codec, ADC, DAC, uh, to perform uh, with some software, noise cancellation, wind cancellation, beamforming, direction of arrival estimations, voice recognitions, or also acoustic event detections. All those features could be done um, with uh, the processings, and this is where the battle is happening. Um, just a slide to show you um, that the audio chain, um, we can make an, analog an analogy with the uh, imaging uh, chain in the, in, the, in the smartphones. Here you have two paths. Um, the, the other one is from the audio chain and the below is for imaging. And when you see the amount of money um, addressed by the audio chain, you can find almost $8 per phone, uh, per, per smartphone on the market, while you find $100 per phone on the imaging chain. So you see that we think there's some room for audio players to increase functionality and prices of their solutions to um, to give more valuable and uh, interesting features on the audio side. Um, if we look at the different players on this audio, uh, on the IC, audio IC market, uh, you will find uh, three big players. So Cyrus Logic is the leader. Uh, then Qualcomm um, is the second player, and Texas Instrument is the third player on this, um, on this market. Um, so if you look at the total audio IC market, this is worth close to $3.7 billion. So now let's finish with the ultimate blocks of the audio chain with the micro speaker. 
So we did an analysis of the micro speaker, so under two inches. So we accept a mini speaker and, and big speaker over four inches. And what uh, emerged from this analysis is that there are three main drivers, so sound quality, more output power, and thinner components uh, to fit in those, um, in those uh, slim smartphones. So here are the three main drivers. And if we look at this micro speakers market revenue breakdown per applications, uh, you see that the market in 2017 is almost $9 billion. We, we, we are talking about the micro speaker at the micro speaker level, and it should reach almost $12 billion uh, in 2022. And the smartphone represents half of this uh, market uh, now and uh, in the futures. So as Yusen mentions, we think that in the micro speakers uh, market, uh, there's a lot of opportunity, um, especially in the VR, AR, and uh, MR market, so augmented virtual and mixed reality. And um, emerging applications like e-rebels uh, and those Edmonton devices uh, will be a key uh, application for, for some players like Yusen, but also um, AudioPixel, which is, which is another MEMS based uh, micro speakers. Um, if we look at in the global way, the big pictures of this, um, of this market, here you have the pictures of the market currently in 2017. So it's almost $14 billion um, with $1.7 billion from the microphones market, $3.7 billion from the audio IC, and $8.7 billion for, from the micro speaker market. Um, the MEMS based microphone industry is just over $1 billion in 2017. And on the right, you have our projections for the next five years. And in 2022, we expected a $2 billion market for microphones with $1.4 billion of MEMS based microphones. The audio IC market should uh, ramp up and goes to $6.1 billion, uh, while the micro speaker market should reach $12 billion, with we expected for uh, U-Sound and other uh, players uh, several hundred million dollars from the men's based micro speaker industry. Um, so in this presentation, I, I try to, to make a summary of the different blocks of the audio chain. If you have any questions, please, please feel free to send us an email. And um, just to remind you, this, present, those, this presentation uh, was extracted from this uh, report, so Acoustic Mems and Audio Solutions, but we have two other um, reports uh, that are talking about that, so status of the MEM industry, but also sensor for smart building. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Guillaume. Very interesting presentation. Uh, okay, so let's continue. I'm pleased uh, now to present our third presenter, Romain Fro, CTO at System Plus Consulting, who will now provide a technology overview of the MEMS microphone. Please, Romain. Hello, everybody. Hello. Thank you very much, Faisal, for this nice introduction. And uh, thank you for both some previous speakers for the very nice slides uh, uh, they showed. Um, so now I will uh, show you different uh, examples of MEMS microphone integrations. Uh, so after uh, having seen uh, some uh, MEMS micro speakers and market uh, of uh, the audio, uh, now I will uh, focus uh, my talk on uh, MEMS microphones. Uh, so I propose you to uh, show you different examples of uh, products on the market. Uh, in order to show uh, the main players and uh, different uh, integration. So I will first uh, start with some consumer product example and then uh, show some differences at, uh, at the packaging level and finally with uh, new, uh, new developments. So in terms of, uh, of consumer products, so we have plenty of uh, devices which are now uh, integrate uh, men's microphones. Uh, so uh, Guillaume, uh, uh, spoke about uh, VPAs. So uh, VPAs are uh, on the market, uh, firstly uh, introduced by Amazon with uh, the Eco family. 
uh, it's really interesting to uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 see the number of microphones which are integrated in these devices. Uh, so here you have uh, an overview uh, of the devices um, in the Amazon Echo, Amazon Echo Show, and Amazon Echo Dot. Uh, so three of the main uh, products from uh, from Amazon uh, bringing uh, Alexa uh, assistant. Uh, as you can see, uh, there is uh, uh, 22 men's microphones for these three products, uh, which is quite amazing. And uh, all of these microphones are provided by uh, by Nolt here. Another example of uh, another supplier of uh, a VPA uh, with a Google Home. Here, it's interesting to have a look on uh, the different uh, architecture uh, comparing to uh, to Amazon. Uh, because here only two men's microphones are integrated inside uh, Google Home. Uh, these microphones are provided by uh, by TTK, uh, formerly in Vincent, uh, formerly analog devices for the men's uh, microphone business. Uh, here only two digital men's uh, microphones are used compared to seven or eight for, for Amazon. Uh, and uh, in order to uh, to provide the same uh, same range of quality, uh, it's interesting to uh, to compare both. Uh, both solution. In terms of uh, of technologies, uh, uh, Knowles and uh, Vincent use uh, two capacitive MEMS microphones. So the capacitive MEMS microphone structure is uh, uh, dominant on the market right now. It is 100% uh, of uh, the MEMS microphone uh, which are integrated in, uh, in, in devices. In terms of manufacturing processes, uh, there are some slight differences between providers. Uh, here you have two examples. Uh, so on top you have uh, the structure of a microphone from Nolts, which is using a polysilicon deposition process to realize both the diaphragm and the backplate electrode. And uh, on the bottom you have a solution uh, used by uh, uh, TDK and Vincent uh, for the microphone. Uh, so here the main difference comes from the fact that the backplate is made with an SOI substrate, uh, and then the polysilicon membrane is uh, manufactured on top of, uh, of the SOI. If we now have a look on uh, the huge market, which is um, smartphones market, it is really interesting to uh, uh, to see the history of uh, of the integration of uh, the microphones inside uh, smartphones. Uh, so it started with one microphone, one men's microphone in, uh, in uh, an iPhone, and now we have four men's microphones per smartphone, and also other microphones inside the, uh, uh, the, the speakers, and, uh, and it's really important in terms of, uh, of volume at the end. If we have a look uh, at uh, the iPhone 7, and after that we'll see iPhone 8 and 10 to see the, the main difference, we can see that uh, the four microphones integrated inside uh, the iPhone 7 were provided by Knowles, Cortec, and ST Micro. Um, here it's always uh, interesting to, to see that uh, most of the references can be uh, changed from uh, one supplier to another. And uh, also another player which is quite present in uh, in, the, in the iPhones is uh, ASC Technologies. Uh, so both ASC and Gortec are using Infineon as a men's dye provider. And in most of the cases, in fact, the references are really similar, so which is a good explanation of how we could be uh, changing from one reference to another. On the other end, you have uh, Knowles and ST Microelectronics, which are using proprietary uh, technologies. And uh, we, we just uh, uh, saw that uh, ST Microelectronics is not uh, anymore in, uh, in the iPhone uh, 8 and 10 uh, business, at least in the model we, we analyze. Maybe they are still present in uh, other models, but uh, in the one we, uh, we opened, it was not the case. Uh, so if we have a look on the iPhone 8 Plus and iPhone 8, uh, we still have four MEMS microphones, so two uh, at the bottom and two on the top. Uh, and uh, if we compare with uh, iPhone 10 now, we can see that uh, there is only three MEMS microphones. Uh, so there is one MEMS microphone so on, at the bottom right, which is not uh, anymore present in the iPhone 10. So now they, still, they are using only three MEMS uh, microphones. Provider are Knowles, Gore-Tec, and ASC Technologies. Uh, it's difficult to, to give a, a share of, um, of all of these players because uh, most of uh, the references could be changed uh, from uh, one font to, uh, to another. Uh, if, we are, if we go uh, more in detail inside both microphones, which are at the bottom of the phone, uh, so for the iPhone 8, 
we can see that uh, in the in the smartphone we uh, we analyze here we had one reference from uh, GoTech and one reference from AC Technologies. Uh, unfortunately, both logo are uh, mixed in the picture here. Uh, AC Technology is on the left and GoTech on, on the right. Uh, we can see that uh, it's provided by two different suppliers, but if we have a look inside uh, the MEMS microphones, we can observe that uh, uh, the dyes, the MEMS dyes, in fact, uh, come from Infineon and the design is really, really close, almost the same uh, design, and it uses the same process for sure. Uh, but if we have a look now on the ASIC dyes, which is on the right of uh, inside the package, uh, we can observe some difference in terms of dye size. Uh, but here it's covered by a globe top, uh, which is uh, protecting the, the ASIC from, uh, from the environment. In terms of, uh, of dye size structures, it's also interesting to, uh, to see the evolution uh, linked to the size of the dies, uh, from uh, a very small die size to now a standard which is in the one or two square millimeter range in terms of size. Uh, this microphone design will directly drive the performance, like the SNR, uh, and uh, of course at the end uh, the die size will drive also the manufacturing cost because uh, uh, if you can produce uh, a men's die of one square millimeter compared to two square millimeter, uh, at the end the cost could be. Uh, be uh, uh, with a factor of two uh, at the end. If we have a look on the technology which is used and the process used by uh, uh, GORTEC and the ASA technologies using the MEMS die from Infineon, uh, we can see that now they are using the latest uh, generation of, uh, of the MEMS microphone for the iPhone. And here there is a, a very interesting uh, uh, process which has been introduced using uh, uh, two um, two backplex structures, uh, so a lot of uh, improvement has been realized with these uh, new uh, backplex structures, and uh, it gives more uh, uh, improvement link to uh, SNR, Senior Integrity, and, and On the other end, uh, now if we have a look on uh, the iPhone 10, you can see that the microphone uh, on the bottom, so now there is only one microphone, is supplied by uh, Gortec and Knowles, so Knowles for the reference we, we, we had in the lab here. Uh, right now we don't have the explanation uh, how or why they, they remove one microphone, so uh, the quality has been improved to uh, have only one reference uh, uh, in this one, so it will be uh, uh, more clear in, uh, in, uh, in a few times. Now if we have a look on uh, uh, the technologies which are, which are used by Knowles, uh, for the dicing of uh, the microphone. So it's quite interesting to have a look on, uh, on the dicing uh, for the MEMS. Uh, since many years now, uh, the all, all players are using the same manufacturing process for the dicing. Uh, it's a sales dicing process which is used for the MEMS die. And for the ASIC, we observe that since uh, some time, uh, Knowles is using a plasma dicing process uh, to cut the ASIC dies uh, at, at the end of the process. We can see a clear advantage uh, by using this plasma dicing because most of the ASIC uh, inside the MEMS uh, microphone package are quite small in the range of one square millimeter, which gives uh, an average of uh, uh, 3,000 dies per 8 inch wafer, which could be added if you use the plasma dicing process. Uh, so with our cost calculation, we estimated uh, that you can save uh, close to uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.6 cents per dies by using uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, this uh, silicon saving, which gives some million of dollar saving per year uh, for uh, such production, which is in the range of one two billion uh, dice per year for for notes linked to this huge market. Now, latest example of uh, product uh, integration with uh, wearable and wearable. Uh, so, also Guillaume talk about this market of wearables. Good example of integration has been made by uh, Apple with uh, the AirPods. It's really interesting to uh, to see that there is two MEMS microphones inside each AirPod, so four MEMS microphones at the end, so one on the top of uh, the AirPod and one at the bottom. Uh, here in the samples we had, it was provided by Gore-Tec, both microphones. In terms of packaging and internal structures, it's really similar to uh, the one which are introduced, integrated inside the uh, uh, the, the smartphones. Another example of uh, wearable devices, uh, so again from uh, from Apple here, uh, it's uh, a microphone which is used inside uh, the Apple Watch Series 3. 
Uh, here again, uh, one microphone provided by Knowles, and uh, a little difference come, uh, come from the fact form factor of the package here, which is a little bit uh, more uh, uh, larger compared to uh, the one which are introduced in the smartphone. And it is explained by the internal structure, which is made, in fact, by using the same process. But here we can observe that uh, Knowles use different uh, die design for the MEMS uh, in order to multiply the number of transducers uh, at the die level. Uh, so Knowles already introduced this, uh, this design in uh, previous iPhones, previous uh, devices. And uh, uh, they, they have a lot of different patterns uh, in this uh, Divine figures. We have also examples here of uh, of uh, design using uh, four transducers or two transducers, and in terms of um, of uh, advantage, it gives some uh, some some good optimization of uh, of the signal to noise ratio. So to continue on uh, the MEMS uh, packaging structures. Um, it is interesting to see that uh, here we already we, we we just saw some example of a microphone using a metal lead structure. So it is most in most of the case used by analog microphone or some digital microphone using a, a bottom pore uh, structure. But there are also a lot of different uh, packaging structures which are used by uh, men's microphone provider, and some of them are using some top pore uh, approach, and some of these top pore could be also uh, made with uh, some laminate type uh, package. Uh, in this case, uh, there is a lot of different uh, patents also pro uh, from the different companies providing this, uh, this packaging approach. And uh, we can see that some of them are quite interesting to, to, to look uh, because uh, it gives some very um, interesting uh, uh, structures uh, in order to uh, be able to connect the die uh, on, 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 on the top lead uh, or on the, the bottom uh, lead and in order to make some electrical connection between uh, your top and bottom uh, laminate, uh, you need to have some electrical connections through uh, uh, a side PCB, which could be filled with, uh, with different uh, metallic via. So again, uh, players like Knowles, Gore-Tec, ASE, uh, TDK, and uh, ST have all their own uh, packaging uh, structures with, uh, with some, some patterns at the end, which give some very uh, importance to, uh, to the packaging uh, for the men's microphones. And another interesting part of, uh, of uh, the packaging is linked to the laminate itself. Uh, what we can observe in the market right now is that uh, uh, the LGA laminate used both by metal lead package or uh, laminate uh, lead package use two to six metal layers uh, for the connection. Uh, so it could be quite interesting to, uh, uh, to see that uh, even if you have very low uh, number of I.O. at the end for men's microphone, you can have uh, up to six metal layers for the interconnection. Uh, of course, all of no, not all of these metal layers are used for, for interconnection. Uh, what we can observe is that there are, in uh, most of the case, some embedded, capa embedded capacitance materials which are integrated inside this uh, laminate substrate. And there are different structures for this, uh, this, uh, these materials. Uh, but in most of the case, it's, uh, it's used uh, between uh, the metal, uh, the medium layers uh, in, uh, in microphone package. And to finish with uh, new development, so uh, previously said that 100% uh, of men's microphone use a capacity detection principle. Uh, so we observed since uh, this year that uh, a new player, Vesper, is also entering the market with a uh, a uh, new uh, uh, detection principle using uh, piezoelectric uh, detection. Um, it's quite interesting in terms of uh, manufacturing process, manufacturing materials, uh, so uh, making the link with uh, Usund. Uh, so here it's also a piezoelectric material which is used, but it is aluminum nitride compared to PZT. Uh, so uh, Vesper is using two aluminum nitride layers. And the result is uh, that it gives a very interesting uh, MEMS device, which is said to be immune to dust, water, and other uh, contaminants. Also, another interesting uh, thing inside this, uh, this device is the size of the ASIC. So we were quite surprised by the very small size, so 0.25 square millimeter for the ASIC dial, uh, which gives the 
possibility, in fact, to produce a very huge amount of, uh, of devices per, uh, per one 18-inch wafer. So we calculated that more than uh, uh, 80,000 80, uh, dies could be made on, with only one wafer, uh, which could be uh, improved by using also a, a plasma dicing process, as we saw uh, in, in, in the previous slides. So there are still a lot of... Uh, of a new interesting uh, manufacturing approach which are used by men's player, men's microphone players, and uh, I hope we will uh, be able to see uh, new development coming and new products using more and more microphones and, uh, in the next uh, couple of, uh, of weeks and, and months. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Romain, and uh, thank you all for those relevant and interesting information. Uh, we are now going to wrap up with um, Q&A but we have just five minutes, so we'll do our best to answer. Um, let's start with the first question we have. Uh, this will be for you, Sam. So, Johnny, one question, or where, well, two questions. Where is the you sound speakers manufactured? And uh, another one would be, is the speaker reflow com compatible? Uh, com compatible? Yes, thank you. Yeah, so the speaker um, itself is uh, produced in, uh, in, in uh, Italy. So we have a partnership with STM, this is uh, public information, and they produce the, the MEMS. Then we have a production that does, does the assembly, and this is done in Austria. So it's uh, partly Italy, partly Austria. Um, it, it's not uh, capable of doing reflow at the moment, but we are working on this, and we expect that a year from now, this is actually possible. All right. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Uh, one question, perhaps for you, Roman. What is the the typical cost structure of a MEMS microphone? Uh, what you can observe from uh, the, the microphone which are used in, uh, in most of uh, the mobile uh, products is that uh, the share between uh, uh, the dies and the package. It's a package. It's uh, um, almost uh, similar, so we, we observe 40% uh, of the cost of, for the ASIC, close to 30 for the MEMS, and 30% for packaging and test. Okay, thank, thank you, Romain. Uh, another question, uh, is you sound speaker able to produce bass, uh, example, bass, example of uh, 50 to 500 Hz? Bass. Yes, um, yes it is. Uh, this would only work uh, for in-ear application. But if you have an in-ear application as an in-ear headset, we are able to go down to zero, two hertz and uh, have a, a very decent bass. In a free field, uh, we would not be able to produce this kind of bass, of course, with this small speaker. But in-ear, yes. Okay. Okay, Th thank you, Johnny. Okay, so we have uh, other questions, but we will we'll do our best to answer uh, all the questions we have uh, by email, and we will come back to you. So the webcast is ending. So within the next 24 hours, you will receive an email that will include the recorded session. Please feel free to share the presentation with who will benefit from the information that has been presented and find all our analysis and report on how iMicronews.com. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Do not hesitate to contact us if you have additional questions. You can find your appropriate contact on the last slide of the presentation. Wishing you to have a good day.